Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's time to update our picks for the best 4K gaming monitors you can currently buy. The last 4K buying guide we ran was back in April. And since then I've tested many more 4K monitors, including some great HDR options. So I'll sneak in this update before the end of 2022. I think I say this in pretty much every monitor recommendation video, but it's never been a better time to jump into 4K gaming than now with cheaper prices and more options than ever before. What's even better about the ecosystem today is that GPU hardware is becoming increasingly powerful, which makes 4K gaming and especially high refresh rate 4K gaming a reality. I still think 1440p is the sweet spot for most gamers, especially those with mid-range hardware, but with the latest generation of graphics cards, you'll be able to produce some pretty impressive numbers even at native 4K without upscaling. This is predominantly a feature of high-end hardware right now, but in some ways 4K monitors are still a high-end category as they do cost quite a bit more than 1440p in today's market. In today's video, we are purely going to be talking about 4K gaming monitors, which means we are not talking about any 60Hz displays, 120Hz is the minimum. I know some people do still buy cheap 4K 60Hz displays, but I'd recommend you don't do that for gaming. I also will be mostly talking about products that I've reviewed and tested myself, so I know they are good, rather than guessing or looking at spec sheets. We have full reviews for lots of the products in this video that are well worth checking out for more in-depth testing and thoughts, but before we get into the recommendations... Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by MSI and their NVIDIA GeForce RTX 30 series of graphics cards. For budget conscious gamers, the Ventus series offers loads of value with a no fuss performance focus design packing large triple fan coolers. Then for the next tier in performance and aesthetics, the gaming series offers low noise operation and eye catching LED lighting. Or for those of you after the best of the best, the Supreme series offers uncompromising performance through state of the art thermal design and of course those chiseled good looks. And of course all models do support ray tracing and DLSS. Also, viewers in Australia and New Zealand can go into the draw to win an epic MSI gaming bundle worth over $2,000 with the purchase of select MSI GeForce RTX 30 series graphics cards for a limited time. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. If you're buying a 4K high refresh gaming monitor right now, the best category to invest into is the 27 inch category. 4K monitors around this size deliver the best performance and are the most affordable, making them great buys for a wide variety of use cases. Prices have continued to drop across 2022 as well, putting the baseline in the $500 to $550 US range, the cheapest that it's ever been. For the majority of buyers, the 4K monitor that makes the most sense to buy also turns out to be the best value, typically sitting around $530 US, but I have seen it drop as low as $450 at times. And that monitor is the Gigabyte M28U, meaning my recommendation hasn't really changed significantly since the last update as Gigabyte continues to be aggressive and highly competitive on price relative to similar competitors. This is a great bang for buck product that I still think is excellent. The M28U is a 28-inch 4K 144Hz IPS monitor that has very good response time performance with an average transition in our testing of 4 milliseconds at 144Hz. It also has very good performance across the refresh range, so for those using adaptive sync variable refresh rates, you don't need to tweak overdrive settings to get the best experience. This IPS monitor delivers speed in the ideal range for the latest generation of IPS panels, so there's no funny business going on here for motion performance, and this is complemented with great backlight strobing that works alongside adaptive sync. We also get HDMI 2.1 support, which is essential when buying a new 4K monitor in 2022. Not all monitors have this feature, so be sure to get one that does. What Gigabyte offers for color quality is also very strong thanks to it being an IPS panel, so viewing angles are excellent and it does pack a wide color gamut, though not as wide as the best monitors of today. Factory calibration is above average, there's a very good sRGB mode for everyday use, and contrast is typical for an IPS panel, no major issues there. To top it all off, Gigabyte include a KVM switch and a height adjustable stand which are both neat feature additions. While I would recommend the M28U for most people after a 4K gaming monitor of this size, there are some situations where an alternative may be better. One very important thing to point out is that the M28U has terrible HDR performance, it's not really an HDR monitor at all, so if you want proper HDR this is not the monitor for you. Just be aware that getting true HDR will cost you around double the MSRP of this monitor, don't be fooled by fake HDR monitors that add it to the spec sheet without including the required hardware. 
There are also several monitors that are quite similar to the M28U that all use the same Interlux panel, including the ASUS Tough Gaming VG28 UQL1A, the Samsung Odyssey G7 S28, and the MSI Optics MAG281 URF, all of which I've tested. From a performance standpoint, these all come very close to the M28U, so the main differentiating factor often ends up as either features or pricing. My general recommendation here is to get the M28U because it has consistently been the cheaper product. However, if you do see any of those other three options leading the pack in value, which may be the case in your region, then I would go with that over the M28U. I have seen the others get as low as around $550, so they're not bad deals or anything of the sort, I just love what the M28U offers at its price. The other reason to get one of the alternate products is that you're buying a 4K monitor to use specifically with a PS5. The M28U isn't the best choice for that as the HDMI 2.1 ports are limited to just 24 gigabits per second instead of the full 48 gigabits per second you get with other monitors. The PS5 doesn't handle this optimally, so getting a full 48 gigabits per second monitor makes more sense. In these instances, I'd recommend the MSI Optics MAG281 URF at the moment, which does offer full bandwidth HDMI 2.1, but again, the Samsung or ASUS options may be suitable depending on pricing. In previous updates, I've recommended an upgrade pick here that's usually something like the LG 27 GP 950, but I found it pretty difficult to justify spending any more than about $550 on a 4K SDR monitor in the back half of 2022. The 27 GP 950, for example, is only slightly better than the M28U, offering similar response time performance and calibration with a wider color gamut and full bandwidth HDMI 2.1, yet it costs $750 US, which is upwards of 35% more expensive. Yes, the GP950 is technically the superior product, but the differences are far too small to justify such a large price increase, and for that reason in this category, I think the M28U or a similar 28-inch IPS is the way to go. If you're after a 4K 144Hz gaming monitor but think 27 or 28 inches is a bit too small, well luckily there are 32 inch models available, the Steve category if you will. Generally speaking, the 32 inch options available today are not as good as the 27 inch options, but there are still some solid choices available to you. With most 32 inch 4K high refresh gaming monitors sitting at $800 US or more, I think it's really hard to go past the value of the Gigabyte M32U, which has been consistently available for between $600 and $680 US for the last six months. This is a very similar situation to the M28U, where Gigabyte are offering the cheapest and best value monitor in this category. I haven't personally tested the M32U, but I did test basically the same monitor in the Gigabyte Aorus Fi32U and found it to perform pretty well. This monitor isn't as well tuned for response time performance as the M28U, but offers a faster experience than many of its 32 inch competitors while also offering solid though unspectacular color quality. It doesn't achieve class leading performance in any area, but it does deliver a good balance between colors and motion performance that's well suited to a gaming display. Despite its low price, there are no apparent deal breaker flaws here. With that said, I do think there are several good upgrade picks here depending on your use case and needs. If you're interested in a 4K gaming monitor but also want to use it for content creation or productivity, and are going to be doing that sort of work quite often, then the MSI Optics MPG 321 UI-QD is a great, though much more expensive choice. This display is typically available for $800 to $900 US, which sees it lose the value equation quite comfortably to the M32U, but it does have some key advantages. The big one is that it has much better color performance. It has a very wide color gamut covering nearly all of the sRGB, Adobe RGB, and DCI-P3 color spaces. This makes it an excellent choice as a dual-use monitor for gaming and content creation. You could flip this display into its built-in Adobe RGB mode for editing images in Photoshop, then play some games at 4K 144Hz when you're done. Or use the decent sRGB mode for watching YouTube content without oversaturation. It's a better calibrated display with slightly better brightness and contrast. However, it's not as strong as the M32U in motion performance, so this is more of a productivity-first 32-inch 4K high-refresh display. 
The other solid upgrade option right now is the LG 32 GQ950. While this monitor has an MSRP of $1300 US, it's frequently available for $900 which is a much more appropriate price. There is no way I'd buy it at the MSRP. What this monitor offers is the best balance of performance I've seen in the 32 inch 4K class. Where the MSI option is a bit min-maxed towards colors and the M32U's main strength is motion, this 32 inch 4K 160Hz IPS from LG sits neatly in the middle. The 32GQ950 has better motion performance than both the MPG321 and the M32U, offering an excellent experience that's equivalent to the 27 inch options discussed earlier including a single overdrive mode experience. This gives the LG the best gaming performance in this category. It combines this with really solid colors including 98% DCI-P3 coverage, solid brightness and contrast, and reasonable factory calibration, plus a flat panel. It's not as accurate as the MSI and it doesn't support the Adobe RGB color space, but it makes up for that with faster response time, so I think this is worth considering as an upgrade pick. If you're after a normal sized 4K monitor that can also do full true HDR, there are finally some good options for you. Last time I ran this update there was, well basically nothing worth talking about, but towards the end of 2022 things are looking on the up for the true HDR gaming monitor space. My recommendation in this category is the Samsung Odyssey Neo G7. It's a 32 inch 4K 165Hz gaming display using VA LCD technology and with a 1196 zone full array local dimming backlight. Thanks to this backlight and the use of high contrast VA technology, the Neo G7 offers a true HDR experience that I think gets the closest to OLED of any LCD monitor I've tested so far. It doesn't quite match OLED for its richness, shadow detail and viewing angles, but there's no doubting the HDR experience here is impressive. The Neo G7 is one of the fastest LCD monitors I've tested in terms of response times, and while motion clarity isn't as good as an OLED, it still offers a strong gaming experience, especially at 4K. The HDR experience is very good as well, the combination of a high zone count backlight and great native contrast leads to minimal blooming in HDR content while retaining the punch you should get from these displays. Peak brightness exceeds 1200 nits and overall this display is somewhat brighter than you'll get from an OLED, though it's not especially bright. Being a more traditional gaming display, the Neo G7 has a few other advantages up its sleeve. The use of a VA LCD means there's no risk of burn-in, and it has a normal sub-pixel structure which plays nicely with desktop apps and text. And of course the size is really nice for desktop use, 32 inches with this sort of resolution is fantastic. There are some drawbacks though, the 1000R curvature is very aggressive and adds nothing to the experience, so while the display is better suited to desktop use, I don't think it's all that versatile as a productivity or creative a monitor. Input latency with dimming enabled is unimpressive and poor viewing angles also require you to view the display dead on to get the best HDR experience. But these flaws are more on the minor end of the scale and shouldn't take away much from what is otherwise a great HDR gaming experience. The Neo G7 has an MSRP of $1300 US which is quite expensive, but it has regularly gone on sale for $1100 and more recently just $1000, so I'd be looking out for a discount and not paying full price if possible. During Black Friday it was also down as low as $800, so hopefully that pricing appears again in the new future. Even if it doesn't though, I can comfortably recommend it at $1000 US. What I can't recommend though is the higher end brother of the Neo G7, the Neo G8. While this display does bump up the refresh rate from 165 to 240 Hz, the Neo G8 ships with deal breaking issues such as scan lines at the highest refresh. I would opt to save the $300 and just get the Neo G7 which works pretty well. Our final category in this video is for the best large format 4K HDR monitor and there's two reasons why this category is included. One, for some people 32 inches is too small and they want something larger and super immersive. And two, in my opinion the overall best 4K HDR monitor for gaming when you don't factor in screen size is in fact a larger format display, that being the LG C2 OLED in its 42 inch size option. The reason why I say this is the best overall 4K HDR gaming monitor right now is because of its OLED technology and the simple fact we don't yet have an OLED option at this resolution with a size below 42 inches. OLED offers three main advantages over our top LCD peak in the Odyssey Neo G7 for HDR gaming, per pixel local dimming, faster response times and better viewing angles. 
With each pixel being able to individually illuminate itself, the C2 OLED offers unparalleled dimming and the ability to show bright and dark objects close together with no blooming or haloing issues. The C2 OLED gets extremely dark for shadow detail, shows true zero level blacks, and is capable of bright highlights over 650 nits in real world content. It also has a glossy screen with great reflection handling, which makes colors pop and HDR shine. Response times are lightning fast on the C2, and while the Neo G7 is a fast monitor, the C2 is an order of magnitude faster. This helps to compensate for its rather low 120Hz refresh rate compared to 165Hz for the Neo G7. Despite this difference, in motion clarity the C2 can actually be better at times simply due to how fast it can transition. And 120Hz is still plenty of speed for visual extravaganzas and other single player titles, which are the best examples of HDR today. The C2 also has a few other advantages which put it in the top spot and make it a great buy. It has a flat panel with excellent viewing angles, it's a massive display that is very immersive without being so large that it's impractical for desktop usage, though it is big enough that it won't be suitable for all setups. It offers full smart TV functionality, 4 HDMI 2.1 ports and Dolby Vision support, making it a great option for console gaming and other forms of content consumption like video playback, plus it's typically a great value option, having recently dropped to a new low price of $800 US, which is among the cheapest prices seen for a true HDR monitor of any kind, let alone one with OLED tech. Of course, being an OLED there are some downsides here. The monitor is not suitable for desktop usage or productivity work owing to its low SDR brightness, non-standard subpixel layout, automatic brightness limiter, and risk of permanent burn-in. Though none of these are significant concerns if your primary use case is gaming or watching videos. It also only offers HDMI, no DisplayPort connector is included here, so you'll need an HDMI 2.1 compatible GPU for the best experience. I'd overlook all of these issues at its current great price tag and just enjoy what it has to offer for 4K HDR gaming. So that's it for this 4K gaming monitor recommendation video, and I think it was a pretty big update compared to what I was talking about in April this year. Back then the main talking points were around how dire the market was for true HDR products at this resolution, but the second half of 2022 has drastically improved that situation with new options, new sizes, and new great price points. I expect things to only get better in 2023 with a huge number of HDR products scheduled to launch next year. As always, if you do want to learn more about the monitors I've been talking about in this video, I have individual reviews available either on this channel or over on Monitors Unboxed. I'd also recommend checking the links in the description for updated pricing information as this does change over time, so check down there if you are watching this video weeks or months after it went live. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you also want to support the channel, then we do have our Patreon and Floatplane accounts, links are in the description below. You'll be supporting our independent testing, which does contribute to these sorts of recommendation videos and also get a few perks along the way, like our Discord community, our behind the scenes videos, monthly live streams, and plenty of other good stuff. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.